is armed and dangerous, proceed with caution. Neighbors alerted authorities who arrived on scene, entering into a three and a half hour standoff with the suspect. During the exchange, shots were fired into a crowded street of pedestrians, injuring one person in the commotion. Raised in Brooklyn, New York, by a single mother, Herbierto Seda, more commonly known as Eddie, was a high school dropout who dreamed of being a Green Beret. Seda was an avid reader, taking interest only in books that could teach him about weapons, ammunition, and military tactics where he eventually developed a talent for assembling homemade pistols. He grew up in a rough neighborhood, where some have described his childhood to be filled with trauma. He was also known to be a highly religious person, and for the most part, stayed out of trouble. Seda was even known to call in tips to the police, informing them of local drug dealers working in his area. In hopes of fulfilling his aspiration, Seda attempted to join the U.S. Army Special Forces, but he was rejected after failing the entrance exam. This left him deeply disappointed and filled with anger. He went on a dark and isolated path instead. March 10, 1994. Seda had a run-in with the law during which authorities caught a glimpse of an object hidden in his clothing, which turned out to be a gun. Little did officers realize, they happened upon a very vital piece of information in this encounter. He was arrested for possession of a deadly weapon, undergoing standard procedures which included being fingerprinted and officers running a search for any outstanding warrants. The firearm found on Seda, along with a faxed copy of his fingerprints, were sent to a lab to see if a match would come up on any criminal prints. Protocol also required officers to send out original full fingerprints to be compared with all the partial prints that had been collected from unsolved crimes that had not yet been identified within eight days. However, the lab determined that the gun Seda was carrying was not operational, and on March 16th, his charges of criminal possession of a gun were dropped. Due to state law mandates, Seda's full fingerprints were never sent to be compared to the millions of partial criminal fingerprints and was subsequently destroyed. Unbeknownst to police, they were at the brink of a huge break in the New York Zodiac case. And like police in the original Zodiac case, they too missed a major opportunity by a touch. The case was closed and Seda was freed, but that would not be his last run-in with the law. June 18th, 1996, Brooklyn, New York. A heated argument between Seda and his half-sister Gladys Reyes escalated into a violent altercation which took place in an apartment they shared with their mother. The argument likely stemmed from Seda's religious virtues, as he berated his half-sister, whose boyfriend was also present during the fight. Seda believed she was associating herself with those he deemed undesirable. When the argument heated up, Seda fired a shot at his sister, shooting her in her back. She reportedly exited the apartment while her boyfriend, who was still inside, barricaded himself in the back room. That's right. Is armed and dangerous. Proceed with caution. Neighbors alerted authorities who arrived on the scene, entering into a three and a half hour standoff with Seda, who also barricaded himself in his apartment. Among first responders was Detective Sergeant Joseph Herbert, who worked extensively on the Zodiac Task Force and was operating as part of the street crime unit at the time. During the uproar, shots were exchanged between police and Seda, who also fired into a crowded street of pedestrians, injuring one person in the commotion. Ultimately, Seda surrendered to the police after a few hours. Suspect is in custody. He was ordered to disarm his weapons into a bucket, lowered from the rooftop of the apartment building down to his window. It would take three buckets full to strip him of his homemade ballistics. Seda also revealed that there were bombs inside of his apartment. After removing both him and his sister's boyfriend from the building, a bomb squad was sent in to sweep the unit. In their search, they found two completed pipe bombs with the makings of more. Upon further inspection, Sergeant Herbert noticed books about serial killers and true crime trading cards in Seda's apartment. When Seda was brought into the 75th precinct after the standoff, he gave a written confession surrounding the events of the shootout and the shooting of his sister. Thoroughly familiar with the New York Zodiac case, Sergeant Herbert noticed the similarities in Seda's handwriting to that of the Zodiac copycat, to which he commented, The way he wrote his S's and T's, the way he had all these words underlined, I knew it in a second. But perhaps most telling, was the fact that Seda put the original Zodiac's trademark, the one he used in his previous letters, on his written confession. Wasting little time, 
Herbert requested a fingerprint analysis, and to his hunch, a match turned up to that of the 1990 Central Park crime scene, and a match with the 1994 letter that had been sent to the New York Post. Needless to say, these were partial prints belonging to Seda that authorities already had in their system prior to his first arrest in 1994, where his prints never made it to the lab to be examined against their unsolved case database. During the time of his initial arrest, there were roughly 2.2 million partial prints to be compared to. In a 1996 New York Times article, then State Director of Criminal Justice Paul Schechtman stated that prints were regularly checked by his office for matches to the Zodiac prints but that a fax copy of prints don't provide enough information to make comparisons with latent prints. At the time, print comparisons typically took less than an hour, as hundreds of employees processed them around the clock. Furthermore, police were now able to match the ballistics from the crime scene to Seda's homemade guns, linking him to the incidents. After being confronted with evidence of his own crimes, Seda flooded detectives with intimate details, spending four hours elaborating on the accounts. In his confession, he shared things with the police that the public was not privy to, things only the killer would know. After the walkthrough, Seda signed a confession that he dictated to the police, one his court-appointed attorney would later claim that Seda did not write. Leading up to this arrest, authorities had no idea they'd come face-to-face -face with the copycat Zodiac killer by happenstance, let alone capturing him on a domestic violence call. However, early detective work focused heavily on the astrological aspect of the crimes, probably misguided as Seda actually had very little knowledge of the stars. Seda became a serial killer after his dreams of joining the US Special Forces were crushed. He came across a segment on television about the original Zodiac killer in the Bay Area. It was then that Herberto Eddie Seda set out to become the Zodiac killer in New York City and its surrounding boroughs. While his name and certain characteristics were inspired by the original killer, he added a little spin to his crimes. Seda was aiming to convince the public that the original Zodiac killer had struck again after decades of a hiatus by terrorizing the city of New York for six years in two separate murder sprees. Like the original Zodiac case, he sent letters to the police as well as local media outlets in New York City. He also signed untraceable letters to authorities with the Zodiac's crosshair symbol, with which he also marked his crime scenes, quite possibly to reflect that of the original killer marking the car door of one of his victims. His spin, however, was the addition of the Zodiac signs implemented into his crimes, specifically targeting victims with the intention to kill one person with the birthday in each of the 12 astrological signs. Additionally, within the two separate sprees, he also exhibited a relative pattern within the timing of his killings, like his predecessor, who often sent messages on specific days marking a month, a year, or any other significant time since an action. The emphasis on star signs was seemingly for increased drama, as Seda would admit, I don't actually know anything about astrology. Furthermore, he admits that his targets were chosen at random, claiming that he had no prior knowledge to any of the victim's astrological signs, despite seven out of eight of them all having different signs. However, the fact that only one of his victims claimed that he was asked for his birth sign prior to being attacked by Seda challenges his admission, leading police to believe that there are holes in his explanation. Earlier in the case, it was suspected that Seda might have been selecting and stalking his victims based on their astrological signs beforehand, or perhaps asked or taken his victim's identification to look at their birthday before killing them. All things considered, and to this day, it is still unclear as to how Seda selected his victims and how much planning and foresight actually went into targeting people based specifically on their zodiac signs. Four of his attacks took place just before dawn on Thursdays, spaced exactly 21 days apart. Between 1990 and 1996, Seda shot at least eight victims, and over that time period, a task force of as many as 50 detectives searched for him. His weapon of choice were his homemade ballistics that were limited to a single bullet at a time, and also narrowed the odds for accuracy. Because of this, not all of his victims died at the scene, with some surviving or at least living long enough to give police a description of their attacker. Police ultimately discovered over a dozen guns he had fashioned himself in his possession, which he had used to commit his crimes. Moreover, Seda was incredibly religious, and during his murderous rampage, he also obsessively read and studied the Bible. One detective would later describe Seda, saying, He was very religious. He kept talking about Jesus and good and evil and salvation, but he never explained how he made his jump from a Roman Catholic upbringing to a Zodiac serial killer. He'd even told detectives he had to kill his targets because they were evil. But unlike the original Zodiac, Seda was not able to evade the authorities. Prior to becoming a copycat killer, Seda did not seem to have any known criminal record. Neighbors described Seda's lifestyle as being reclusive and even misanthropic, 
saying he was rarely seen leaving his home in Brooklyn during the day. One of them even recalled that a week prior to his arrest, Seda made a rare public appearance outside of his apartment building, where he had an intense outburst. A celibate Seda yelled out in rage, I'm gonna start killing. I'm gonna start killing mother because I'm not getting no sex. May, 1998. At the beginning of his trial, Seda would interrupt the hearing with a number of unsolicited outbursts, which his counsel was unsuccessful at taming. Even yelling about wanting new lawyers and not wanting to be in court, forcing a recess. His lawyer would claim that Seda was overly tired from lack of sleep due to traveling to and from court and that the outburst also came from a place of frustration. Additionally, they tried to build his case up to plead insanity due to schizophrenia, chronic paranoia, and hermit-like tendencies, but they were unable to find experts to declare him as such. On June 20th, Seda was charged with one count of attempted murder in the case involving the shooting of his half-sister, who survived the attack. And on June 21st, he was charged with three accounts of murder and another count of attempted murder, in addition to other charges which included the murders of Joseph Prost, Patricia Fonti, and John Diacone, and the attempted murder of James Weber, all of whom were victims of a Zodiac spree. On June 24th, 1998, after a six-week trial, 30-year-old Herberto Ediceta was convicted on all three counts of murder and one count of the attempted murder, receiving a life sentence where he would not be eligible for parole before serving a minimum of 83 years and four months. In total, Seda was convicted of 17 crimes, which included murder, assault, and criminal possession of a weapon, and altogether serving 232 years in prison, or rather, life in prison. In June of 1999, Seda was found guilty on eight additional counts of attempted murder, including the attempted murder of his half-sister, resulting in an additional 152 and a half years in prison. While he acknowledges being inspired directly by the original Zodiac Killer, and has been called the New York Zodiac Killer, he has been said to hate when people refer to him as a copycat. As far as the original Zodiac Killer's case, it's been over 50 years since the original Zodiac case and 25 years since that of the copycat spree. And since then, recent developments have been made on the 340 character cipher created by the original Zodiac, which had remained unpuzzled all these years. The cipher was originally received by the San Francisco Chronicle in November of 1969 and was a mystery both professionals and amateurs alike have devoted their time to solving over the years. An announcement was made in December of 2020 that the encryption had finally been cracked after decades of being concealed by its terrifying author. The infamous cipher was decoded by private citizens David Aronchak, an American software developer, Sam Blake, an Australian mathematician, and Jarl van Eyke, a Belgian computer programmer who considered themselves to be amateur codebreakers. They utilized various computer programs where they input the symbols until it was eventually decoded. Aronchak noted that he spent 14 years trying to crack the code, and because of the combined dedication of the three of them, the Zodiac's elusive message can finally be read. Included in the note, the Zodiac expressed these words, I hope you're having lots of fun and trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show. I'm not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise all the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me. In his statement about the show, it's believed that he was referring to the TV show AM San Francisco, where in one episode, someone called in claiming to be the Zodiac Killer and stating they did not want to go to the gas chamber. Apart from this, and after decades of wondering who the real Zodiac is, and what piece of information might have been hidden with the encryption, unfortunately, the cracked cipher does not reveal the killer's true identity, nor does it provide any specific additional information regarding his spree. The alignment of the code ran diagonally through the message, sometimes shifting columns where certain phrases would stick out to the team as they were decoding. According to Aranchek, this reference helped them date the letter, stating that it couldn't have been in its final form before October 22nd, the day the caller claimed to be the Zodiac Killer. Although Aranchek notes that the code is complicated, he states that a 1950s U.S. Army code manual contains the basic scheme. The FBI and the San Francisco Police Department have since confirmed that the team cracked the code. In their statements, they also mention that the investigation of the Zodiac case is still ongoing, and that the crimes are still unsolved. One former homicide inspector stated that while he's glad the code was finally cracked, it doesn't provide much additional information, and what they need is to crack a cipher containing his name. With so much hope placed in the possibility that the cipher had more clues embedded in it, sadly, to this day, the identity of the Zodiac Killer remains unknown.